97.3 City FM. Relevant Radio. Always. When the President of the Republic goes before Parliament in fulfillment of his constitutional obligation to deliver his message on the state of the nation last Thursday, I watched on television in the hope that he would capture the mood and the difficulties that face our people daily. I waited to hear him admit that we are in crisis and I willed him on to offer a glimmer of hope and ask all of us Ghanaians to help resolve the crisis in which we find ourselves. I wanted him to admit that ours was indeed a nation in crisis. Unfortunately, millions of Ghanaians, including my humble self, waited in vain. President Muhammad painted a picture that bore very little resemblance to the reality that is today's Ghana. We have made cocoa farming attractive. The NHIS is flourishing. He has overcome the energy crisis. Really? Mr. President, Question. Mr. President, are you living in the same Ghana as the rest of us? <laughs> I was forced to the conclusion that the President chose to tell us a tale of two Ghanas during his th three hour, 40 minute speech. There's the Ghana inhabited by the president, his family, friends, and a select small group. Instead, the president mentioned the prospects of a few jobs here and there, and went on to make an embarrassing display of a few vulnerable Ghanaians. The liberties of the Ghanaian people that should not be accepted. Thanks to modern technology, the President was still on his feet in Parliament when words started coming from around the country, challenging the veracity of many of the claims he was making. Far from the work progressing on the 60-bed district hospital in Salaga, as the President claimed, those who live in that community describe the site as fenced, blocked, and abandoned. <laughs> the residents of Hohoi say that the town rose in their town was built in Kufor's time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is disrespectful to the people of Ghana and to our republican institutions for the president to exhibit such a cavalier attitude to facts in a formal address to the nation. <laughs> the residents of Hohoi say that the town rose in their town was built in Kufor style. Ladies and gentlemen, it is disrespectful to the people of Ghana and to our Republican institutions for the President to exhibit such a cavalier attitude to facts in a formal address to the nation. Less than 24 hours after the President stood in Parliament displaying Madame Naomi Atiyadran, a teacher and a known NDC activist from Chile, the Member of Parliament for Qatar from his own party was in the house telling the country about the desperate water situation 
in his constituency. We have a drought situation in this country. There's been no rain for about three months. The level of water in our dams is dangerous and low. Large tracts of farmlands and crops have been lost in this fires. But the president was so determined only to find and tell good news that he omitted to say a word about the drought. He sought to explain the theatrical show he staged in Parliament with a claim. He was providing us with evidence for the claims he was making about the state of the nation. I'm afraid it did not work. And it turned out to be an embarrassing exercise in many mediocrity to borrow a form of words that is doubtlessly familiar to our president. I joined the president to celebrate his 16 success stories. Unfortunately, their stories do not constitute the reality that is present-day Ghana. For every leap beneficiary that allegedly now has 10 pays, I can point to 10 hard-working individuals whose businesses have collapsed due to the unfavorable economic conditions. In fact, the president also omitted an important group of beneficiaries of his government over the last eight years. These include Alfred Wyoming and other beneficiaries of the Create, Loot and Share Judgment Debt Brigade. The beneficiaries of the Sada, of the looting of the Sada guinea farm and tree planting exercise. The beneficiaries of the looting of the Jida scheme and the beneficiaries of the looting of the Smart Bus brand rebranding scheme. Why did the president fail to bring these people to Parliament? <laughs> For the 16 who were bused to Parliament, we can populate this room. Indeed, the nearby Mohenigan's Law Stadium, with thousands and thousands of the young unemployed from Musu, La, Teshi, and Nungwa, the catchment areas of this auditorium. What about our black queens, who after winning the gold medal at the All Africa Games, <laughs> were treated so shabbily by this government, which has refused to honor its promises to them? Is the president saying he has no evidence of these? Why did he not bring them to power? <laughs> Fellow Ghanaians, running a nation and reporting in on his business, is set on his state, is serious business. It should not be reduced to a public relations activity. 